وتحفز النفس الكريمة تبتغي الجنات بحلول شهر الصوم والرحمات والرضوان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Continuing with our discussion of the Jews 10 of the Quran Kareem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues the discussions and the ayats relating uh, the battle of Badr and Qital and warfare in general. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers, وَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ That you prepare for them whatever you are capable from strength, from fast or tied horses, trained horses, so that your very presence may instill awe in the hearts of the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your enemies and another group besides them in general reference to the hypocrites and the munafiqeen. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells the believers that they should prepare for warfare, prepare for combat and whilst it is in reference to the Medina city, the city of Medina tul Munawwara, it's all also applicable to the individual Muslim as well, that for a person to be prepared to defend what is theirs, for a person to remain physically as well as psychologically ready to engage in any defense of their deen and property is something which is noteworthy and desirable and something which a Muslim should not shy away from. Thereafter, a few ayats later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of how the hearts of the community of Medina tul Munawwara and the Muslims in general were now united, wherein he says, وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ that he created ulfa, love and muhabbat bet- between their hearts. And then he tells Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا That if you had to spend whatever is in the earth, all of it, you had to spend how much money you wanted to, مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ You would have not created love and affection between their hearts, but it is only Allah that has created ulfa and love between them. إِنَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise, all powerful. Now, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alludes and points to a very important aspect of social living. That we all desire and we all wish for unity in various ways. And there be love and mahabba amongst families, amongst communities, amongst the ummah at large. And in resorting to creating items or methods that will now create bonds, we think that if we spend an amount of money, if we pour in copious amounts of resources, then we will be able to create love and affection. Here, Allah Ta'ala clearly states that it is He who is now capable of creating ulfa and compassion amongst all the believers and amongst people right till the end of time. So it is to be considered a ni'mah, a bounty solely from Him. Yes, you can create the environment of love and affection, social cohesion, but the actual love and the actual affection will only come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, in the middle of the of the of the Jews rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of various issues that are pertaining to or were pertaining to the Yahud and the Nasara. Wherein Allah Ta'ala says, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرُ بْنُ اللَّهِ That the Yahud, the Jews said that Uzair is the son of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is in reference to a group of the Jews that after the destruction of Jerusalem, Al-Quds, wherein they resided and this uh, occurred uh, in the early years of Jewish history, the Torah was lost to them. After the invasion and the subsequent first diaspora, the Yahud, the Jews, regathered in Jerusalem. But the Torah, their divine book, had been lost to them. Uzair was traveling to Jerusalem many decades before the actual invasion of Jerusalem had taken place. And he was on his way on the eve of that invasion of Jerusalem by an Iraqi polytheist uh, king. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him sleep and the discussion of him going to sleep appears in the earlier pages of the Quran Kareem. And it was for a wisdom, it was for a reason. When he had awoken <coughs> after a long time, and one would assume 
that it was close to either 70 or 100 years after he had awoken. He found that everything around them, around him, maybe with the exception of a few of his personal items, had now rotted away and gone away. His transportation, etc. When he comes to Jerusalem, the Yahud have regathered after many decades of them being in their diaspora and them fleeing for their safety and their lives and the destruction of Jerusalem without the Torah, without their divine book. Uzair prepares or he, uh, he memorizes, he had memorized the Torah and he now brings forth the Torah from his memory. Hence, a group of the Yahud at that time considered Uzair and openly said in defiance of the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Uzair is the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-iyadhu billah. The Nasara for their part, an issue which still is evident and consists amongst them, the vast overwhelming majority of them, is that they claimed and continue to claim al-Masih ibn Allah, that Isa alayhi salat was salam, who is known as the Messiah, he is called al Masih for various reasons, from the word to touch, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted him the ability to touch those who were ill, those who were diseased in any way, and bi idhnillah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would be cured. Hence the name al Masih. Now, they would claim that Isa alayhi salat was salam is the son of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemns both these statements, past, current, and present as well. ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُمْ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ That is a statement with their mouths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the strongest terms. قَاتَلَهُمُ اللَّهُ أَنَّا يُؤْفَكُونَ That may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fight with them, which is an expression of anger, which is an expression of extreme vent, that how is it possible that these people could behave in such a way? أَنَّا يُؤْفَكُونَ That where is this here ever invented or created from? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on further to say, اتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُهْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ That they were such that they took their priests and their rabbis and their so-called scholars and community religious leaders to be lords and deities and sustainers from besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Masih ibn Maryam. They took him as well. This is in re- direct reference to the pontification which is still present in many groups of Christianity, especially the Catholic brand of Christianity that where a person because of their righteousness and following their particular way of life is now pontified by being called a saint uh, beautification as it is referred to by way of the uh, of the church in particular that where they are granted that elevation that is somewhere between humanity and divinity Billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already centuries ago discusses this particular method of beautification that is present in that church where they would now elevate people by the way of sainthood uh, to a level of they would now be beyond the average human being by way of their accountability and they may be used as direct intermediaries or be prayed to directly, be commemorated and sacrificed for directly as is very evident in the Catholic strain of Christianity and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now condemns it in the great possible greatest of possible ways towards the end of the surah in the uh, Jews of uh, in the in the surah uh, towards the end of the Jews in the surah of uh, surah Tawbah where surah Tawbah has now begun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues the discussion of the munafiqeen and the hypocrites now the hypocrites of Madinatul Munawwara many of the scholars are of the opinion that they were a particular group of people that resided in Medina at a particular time Post Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, many of them either died or the majority of them, it seems, assimilated and became genuine Muslims like the rest of society. But the quality of hypocrisy and nifaq uh, 
will continue to remain in the ummah where people will display traits of nifaq and hypocrisy and as a community that can threaten the stability of the Islamic State they continue to exist right till the end or right till the time the ummah remains as a solidified community they will continue to be an issue and a concern and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah At-Tawbah speaks of the way that they would behave wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says farihal mukhallafun that those who have remained behind especially those who are the munafiqun not the righteous believers that they are actually quite happy that they manage to now uh, tell you a story why they could not participate in battle this in particular was referenced the uh, or it references the battle of Tabuk that why they could not join you and why they had even coerced one another by saying La tanfiru fil har that do not go out in the heat of uh, the season, referring to the fact that uh, Tabuk was uh, was concluded. The expedition and the battle of Tabuk happened in a very hot and uh, a part of the year. It happened in summer, and hence many of them, up to seventy, it is assumed, did not join Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam under the pretext of we will be able to get away with it with the flimsiest of excuses. They were three believers and whose incident is discussed separately and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the acceptance of their tawbah and they are not to be included amongst the annals and groups of the munafiqun who were a category independent of those who were left behind and those who did not join the battle of uh, the battle of Tabuk. An incident occurs with regards to Abdullah bin Ubay al-Salul. And he was regarded as the head or the leader of the Munafiqeen. And he requested upon his uh, deathbed that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam perform his uh, janazah salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that he was a Munafiq. Even at the time of janazah itself, Umar radiallahu anh attempted to discourage Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from performing the janazah of this particular man. Umar uh, radiallahu anh of course expressed his reasons. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went ahead and performed the janazah. Janazah Salah, and in many narrations, we understand that he also gave his cloak to be used as part of the uh, the, the kafan of uh, this particular man, Abdullah bin Ubay. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counsels him and tells him, La tu salli ala ahadim minhum mata abadan that you do not perform salah upon any one of them that has died you know thereafter or from now on wala taqum ala qabrihi and do not stand upon their graves do not stand in supplication or part of the rites of their of their final burial why because they have disbelieved and they have died in such a way that they are transgressors and nothing about them whether it is their wealth or or, or their children should ever astonish you because ultimately it is a rope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is extending unto them in this dunya, in this world. And this is something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had been specifically instructed to, to stay away from them by way of any janazah rites or final rites. They continue to exist. And the question does arise that why didn't Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa order that they may be expelled from the community or be executed? And he gave an explanation why. That it should not be said that Muhammad is now killing his own people. Uh, as the, the, the disbelievers and certainly the, 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 the empires of the world, Romans uh, in particular, would now pick up on the fact that according to us, it's one Muslim or a group of Muslims killing another Muslims. They would not go into the fact of them being hypocrites or even delving into those details that these people here were more dangerous than the disbelievers themselves because they were the poison or they were the dirt inside the system as opposed to what was, uh, what was outside. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not do so. However, Umar radiallahu anh in particular remained very concerned 
that no one of the munafiqun should be part at least of his inner council. And for this reason, Umar radiallahu anh, was blessed, alhamdulillah, with great insight that whenever he suspected anybody of being a munafiq, a hypocrite, that he would exclude this person from giving counsel or being in a position of authority. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us hikmah and wisdom and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all khair and good in this month of Ramadan. Ameen.